I wanted to ask you, because Debbie Wasserman Schultz, she does not support Medicare for All. She's been very vocally against Medicare for All. However, you know, we are seeing a lot of people lose their jobs and thus lose their employer-based health insurance. We're living through a pandemic. Florida is one of the worst states. Has Debbie Wasserman Schultz at all changed her position on Medicare for All even a little bit? No, not at all. In fact, um, she refused twice to even meet with the members of our progressive caucus that were trying to talk to her about Medicare for All. She had her toady, of course, meet with them at one point, but really didn't give them the time of day. She has zero, zero intention or interest in single payer health care, zero. She takes money from big pharma and she takes money from the private health industry. Th this, isn't, this isn't rocket science. What's infuriating about it, really, is that she never misses an opportunity to drop her breast cancer survivor card on the table and, and really play this sort of like how hard it was for her and she survived breast cancer. And, I, and I'm not negating that. It's just infuriating to me that she doesn't think we're all deserving of that same health care that she got. And so if you're going to really be out there as a breast cancer survivor and expecting any amount of real like camaraderie or support in that in that arena, you need to maybe think about people that have breast cancer and have no health care. And before this pandemic hit, back in 2019, when everyone was making this argument, I shouldn't say everyone, but, you know, the corporate Democrats running in the presidential primary were saying that people love their employer based health insurance. They never responded to the fact that 68,000 Americans per year were dying, according to a Princeton study, because they didn't have health care. And that was a relatively conservative estimate. But now it's got to be worse. We don't know what the numbers are, but we can only anticipate that the number of people dying because they don't have health insurance is going to increase. The number of people who are uninsured is going to increase. So I think that, you know, Medicare for all to not support it was indefensible in 2019. But in 2020, I've been arguing that if you don't support it now, you're just insane. Even like putting corruption aside, because we do know that there's conflicts of interest. There's donors, you know, interests who are influencing Debbie Wasserman Schultz. But even in spite of that corruption, if you don't support it, then that's just inhumane at this point. You lack human empathy. And to talk about, you know, being a breast cancer survivor, that's that's great. We're all glad that she survived breast cancer. But why wouldn't you afford that same, you know, possibility to other people? Because maybe they can't even, you know, get checked, you know, to see if they have a cancer of some sort. There's no type of preventative health care for people who don't have health care. So it's deeply frustrating. And, you know, if you were elected... Uh, you would be another co-sponsor to the Medicare for All Act. Um, what are people saying in your district as you've been campaigning? I know you haven't probably been able to have much, you know, person-to-person uh, -person conversations, maybe over the phone, but what's the response to people when they hear that you support Medicare for All? It's like everywhere else in the country. What, 72%? I'd say that our area pretty much mirrors... I get, I would say it's pretty close to mirroring whatever the national, that percentage. So most people, when they are presented with it in a normal manner and not in a way where, do you want to lose your insurance? You're going to lose your insurance. You know, when, when you, when you present it to people as a fact-based scenario, uh, you've got like, I would say close to three quarters. I would say close to three quarters of people support Medicare for all. And yet our employee our employee does not see fit to give us what we want, even though she gets that health care. So we pay for it for her to have it, but she doesn't think we can have it. How people do not feel inspired to pick up pitchforks at this point, I don't understand. I won't even debate Medicare for all anymore with anybody. I just won't. I'm not even. That is now in the way with flat earthers or creationists or. It's with the people that don't even warrant a response anymore. I am so done with it. It's just, it's ridiculous at this point. I'm really glad you said that because I totally agree. Like, we're beyond the point of selling and debating Medicare for All. We know it's the best option. Uh, medical experts have endorsed Medicare for All. Uh, you know, I just shared an article to Joe Biden on Twitter from Physicians for a National Health Program. Now it's just a matter of give it to us. We want it. And especially now during a pandemic, I think that our arguments make sense to where it's not even an argument. It's just common sense. Now it's just a matter of when will Congress and, you know, govern in, uh, government in the United States actually give the people what 
we need and want. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that you said that because it really is, it takes a level of delusion that is comparable to that of flat earthers and other conspiracy theorists to think that Medicare for all isn't the option. I mean, you're either <coughs> lying to yourself or lying to everyone else. It's a distinction without a difference at this point, but either way, it's not acceptable. And anyone who doesn't support Medicare for all, no. they've got to go. They're just okay with people dying. Like that's basically what it comes down to. You're okay with people dying if they don't have health care. And that's completely unacceptable, especially if you are from the Democratic Party and you claim to have the moral high ground as Debbie Wasserman Schultz does, which is a joke, but I mean, nonetheless, she still claims it.